Hi, I'm Rosie Clark from Museums at Night and I'm here with Uber Cluster Coordinator Laura Crossley. Now Laura, you started out um, at Norwich Heart working on the Norwich Cluster, then you set up your own Cluster of Museums at Night activity based around showing them and then in 2012 you um, generated your own North Norfolk Cluster across three different towns. <laughs> um, so you must pretty much enjoy this. Can you tell us some of the best things about being a cluster coordinator? What keeps you doing it? Uh, being a cluster coordinator is just the best job. Um, it's really, really good to work with Culture24 to get all of that marketing support that really, really helps venues to get on the map. It's so interesting to work with lots of different venues. So the North Norfolk venues are really, really diverse from council or museums that are fairly well funded right the way through to preservation societies who've never even run events before and it's such a privilege to be able to work with all of those different people and help them do events that are going to be really appealing to the local community and the great thing about clusters as well is that it's so much better doing a joint offer than just one random museum doing an event on its own it's great to see people who've never worked together before coming together and doing something that really benefits the community well, that's fantastic. But, I mean, it's not all plain sailing, is it? What, what would you say are some of the main challenges that you've faced as a coordinator? Certainly, um, again, in the, the North Norfolk cluster, um, a lot of the venues in the towns, even though the towns are fairly close together, had never really worked together before. Um, and I guess that's because small venues are just trying to get on and, you know, work as hard as they can to do their own thing, and they don't necessarily always think about the venues that are around them. Um, so it was quite a challenge to get people around the table at first and also find out who the best person in an organisation is to take the idea forward. It's got to be someone who's really, really proactive and passionate about the idea of museums at night. Um, also getting local community support. Um, it's a great thing to do for local communities, but you can't just come in and you know, assume that everyone will be really, really positive about the event. You have to really work with local communities to make sure the events and things that they want to go to um, are affordable and have as few barriers as possible to make it a real community festival rather than this thing from sort of the Eiffel Towers that's trying to be fed to the local community. Yeah, it's, it's got to be grassroots and it's got to consider the audience, I think, are the, the key points there. So, as you started out, thinking back to that time, is there anything that you wish you'd known? I think um, the value of starting early, <laughs> um, certainly um, we did a really, really good blogging scheme with um, Norfolk Library Service and the idea of that was that 20 people who either had low levels of literacy or low le levels of computer literacy um, came to the local library and learned how to blog and also gain more confidence in literacy. Um, and then they blogged about the festival and also about North Norfolk in general and the history of North Norfolk. Um, we found it really hard to get those local volunteers who could commit for a long period of time to come to sort of regular courses and certainly starting as early as possible. Museums at night might be in May, but don't start in sort of February or March. Start a long time earlier. Mm. Um, I also think that had all our events been quite disparate, it wouldn't have worked as well. Um, at first, we were all the venues were going to do very, very different events, and then when we got together and all the venues kind of talked about their plans, we thought actually the one thing that ties us together is the Victorian theme. Um, be it people's collections that fit with the Victorian era, the buildings, or just the local area, which became really, really important and was a massive tourist resort in the Victorian era, from sort of being really sleepy fishing villages. It suddenly boomed, and the rich and famous were going to North Norfolk. Um, and I think, um, looking back, I wish we'd kind of looked at that theme earlier because we, we produced a festival that was great. I think Victorian nights went really, really well. But I think we could have done a lot more with that theme if we'd thought about it earlier. Mm. So I think it's kind of, at the very start, thinking who's involved, what are our collections, what are our shared stories, and how can we really bring that together, and how do we have the time to bring that together? Yeah, sort of auditing the, the skills and the assets and the resources and the time and the money and yes. what you've got first. Yeah. Yeah. And, get, and also getting the external partners on board, and we're hoping to get money to do um, a museums at night event in North Norfolk again. And we're already now talking to local voluntary agencies who might be able to help us get volunteers. We're talking to local youth advisory panels to try to get more young people involved. 
and the major thing is talking to local businesses because in order to make this a sustainable festival we need to get local business support to help sponsor the festival and I think that's what clusters have to think about who else do we need to involve to really embed this into our local town yeah I mean clearly partnership working is absolutely key yes <laughs> definitely yeah so we're recording this video for the benefit of people who may be considering running a cluster in their local area what would be your final top tips for people who think maybe their area could form a museum that might cluster? I would say just go for it. I would say even if you have a meeting and then you think actually this won't work, just have that meeting, get those initial partners on board and see if you know there is a way that you can tie all the stories together. I'd say the key for us was marketing um, and that's the real beauty of clusters that um, one venue on its own doing an event is great and could get lots of visitors but I know that venues in North Norfolk who tried before had got sort of between 6 and 50 visitors which is okay but it's not amazing. Bringing everything together, getting a great designer, we had a brilliant designer who really created a good brand for Victorian Nights. Um, we had a really really nice leaflet that set out all of the events we all work together to make sure, sure our events really complemented each other in terms of the theme and also the times they were on. So people could go from one venue to the next to discover what was happening. Or if there were events that were going to take, say, two or three hours, like we had a, a steam train ride that was really good, but that was like its own event for three hours, that was on another night. So it didn't detract from the other events and it all worked well together. Um, and also making the most of having that cluster partnership. So we had a competition where people who came to five or more events got put in a prize draw. Um, and just really making the most of all these venues coming together. And another top tip is just because you're in a cluster, don't, the venues can't forget that they're still trying to market their own event as well. The venues in Victorian Nights that marketed their own event via posters and flyers and um, banners outside the venue did better than the venues who just um, relied on the central publicity because it's about getting your regular fat sort of audience as well as trying to build a new audience. Yeah, it's interesting what you say about posters and flyers and things on the streets so that even passers by who may not have thought it was for them will have that final touch point that might just yes. convert them into yeah. visitors. Yeah. Oh, terrific. Well, thank you ever so much for taking the time to talk to me about museums at night and all the best in the future. Thank you very much. Cool. Lovely.